Welcome to the River Hamble in glorious southern England. I am on board possibly one of the most beautiful yachts I have ever been on, the Oyster 595. What am I doing on this yacht? I hear you all ask. Well, as you know, we are moving to Ruby Rose 2 and she is in building Vietnam at the moment. However, we get so many questions about monohulls and what should I be looking for in a monohull? What's on the market at the moment? So what we're doing is a small series on what is available on the market, different types of monohull and showing you the pros and the cons to each. And we're gonna do, for instance, deck saloons, a performance cruiser, a performance boat, a cruising boat, uber luxurious boats, classic designs. And by comparing and contrasting, you can think, actually that works for me, that doesn't work for me. Hopefully this will give you some insight into the process that we went through when we were trying to decide what to buy. Now, obviously boats like this are super luxurious and they have the price tag to match. So this is not gonna be for everybody, but who doesn't like seeing the nice interior of a luxury yacht? I personally obviously do. So we're gonna kick this off with the Oyster 595, which of course I am stood on already. Let's get going. So let's start this walkthrough of the Oyster 595 with a good look at the helm stations. We are twin helmed to go with those twin rudders. It is an absolutely beautiful position. There is really clear visibility here. And as you can see, everything both on port and starboard is fully automated. There is a lot to see, carbon wheels, a full navigation suite. And honestly, I think that if you wanted to do long passages as we have done, long ocean passages, you are not going to get tired working from this helm station lots of visibility and pretty secure so as we move around to actually take a look at what is involved in controlling this boat it is pretty high tech here let us start fully automated sail control so you've got the main the genoa the outhaul you also have full monitoring of all the boat systems the autopilot controls as you would expect but also a bow thruster and a stern thruster electronic Volvo engine controls there. So you have fingertip control over the engine and this is all replicated on the starboard side with some changes. But again, there is nothing that you can't control from here. Now forward of the helms, you have an amazing, a beautiful cockpit. Now, obviously as this is Oyster, all the fabric options are bespoke, but it is separated from the helm. And this really is a beautiful area either to relax or for the off watch to kind of like sit and take in the view while sailing as the 595 is a center cockpit you do have this large wide deck area aft of the helm stations a captive main sheet system so you don't have a cluttered aft deck lots of locker space and as you can see you have the flush mounted hatches and oodles and oodles of teak Moving further aft, you have the optional integrated drop-down bathing platform. This thing is beautiful. And again, for relaxing, for kind of retrieving or getting on and off of your dinghy, this is a pretty amazing space. Side decks wide and clear, large winches. You know, this is a powerful boat and needs deck hardware to boot. Everything electric. And again, you've got the manual foot controls for the winches here. If we take a move down the side deck, again, we've got wide clear decks. You can see that you have flush cleats, those pop-up cleats, which are beautiful and practical and no toe stubbing there. Again, deck hardware, you can see this is all absolutely top quality, large Genoa tracks and those signature black wraparound windows, which means that you can spot an Oyster from a long way away. Now let's take a look at some statistics on the Oyster 595. Now this is, this boat can be specified with different keel configurations. So you have a standard keel or you can have a shoal keel or even a lifting keel. The length is 19 meters, that's 62 feet. The length of the hull, 18 meters. So the length of the waterline, almost 17 meters. And that has a five and a half meter beam. And this should easily translate to a hull speed, which allows double digit cruising speeds to be achieved pretty easily. 
the bowsprit, the windlass capstan, and then aft of that, you have a chain locker. But then you have this huge, absolutely huge sail locker. So again, we've got a kedge anchor in here. This would make a really good sail locker and also a place to hold lines and sheets, fenders, and anything else that may need to be stowed while underway. Now let's look at the rig on this boat. She is huge and no surprises here. You are not gonna get this through the ICW. You are looking at almost 28 meters of rig and that gives you 180 square meters of sail area. You also won't be too surprised to see a fully hydraulic set of sail controls. And of course, on a boat of this size, you are looking at inner mast reefing for that finger trip control. So again, everything automated, everything with manual backups. This is gonna be a pretty easy boat to sail shorthanded. Now to complement the miles of teak work, we have flush mounted hatches. This is a real bugbear of mine, but my own bias aside, let me regale you with some statistics. We have fuel tanks, we have 1420 liters, that's 312 gallons of diesel and 1100 or 250 gallons of water. So again, you are not gonna go without fuel and you've got a huge range here. And as we finish off our tour of the exterior of the Oyster 595, take a fly past this beautiful cockpit table and then down the deep and wide companionway steps to have a really good look at the interior of this absolutely stunning boat. Now, as we swoop down into the saloon of the Oyster 595, just take a minute to look at the quality of the fitments here. Everything is absolutely top grade, but this is almost a fully customizable boat. So you have choices of fabric, you have choices for wood finish. Also take a moment just to look at the amount of light that is coming into this saloon through those seascape windows, coupled with those huge deck windows. This is a really lovely light area. And you know, it's a luxurious place to live, but it is also fully functional. And this navigation suite gives you fingertip control, satellite communications, and full access to all the boat systems. Moving past the companionway steps onto port, we have that linear galley, which is oh so familiar in center cockpits. And again, that leads to the aft cabin. Let us briefly, while we swing past through the saloon again, discuss the price of the Oyster 595. The base price is 2.3 million British pounds. That equates to 3 million US dollars. Now that is pre-tax and pre-customization options. And while the Oyster 595 comes with a very high base specification, it is very, very likely that owners will customize these vessels extensively. So I think that you will be looking with tax and with customizations between four and five million US dollars when you have finished with all your options. So if you have that sort of money down the back of the sofa and you want to sail the world in both style and luxury in this 60 foot yacht, then this really could fit the bill. So dining for eight people, this beautiful saloon table, the amount of light that comes into this boat through those windows and just the quality of the craftsmanship, whether it's the upholstery or the woodwork, this is a superb craft and I have to give a nod to the absolute care and attention that has gone into building this boat. Interesting, Oyster have also taken many of the features from some of the larger models and integrated it into the 595. So let's take one last swing through this absolutely beautiful saloon. Imagine ourselves all sitting with a glass of something sparkly in our hands while we look through these fantastic seascape windows and marvel at our absolute luck that we are able to enjoy this beautiful vessel before heading forward into the fore cabin and the Pullman berths. So as we glide gently forward past the compression post, past the Pullman berths on port and the heads on starboard, we can see that we are entering the fore cabin. And I hesitate to call it a fore cabin because really it should just be labeled the presidential suite because it is an absolute paragon of beauty and excellence here. And 
absolutely stunning place and there is so much natural light coming in through those double hatches in the roof again absolutely beautiful consider that you can make this absolutely bespoke any fabric options that you choose to have and again the woodwork is beautifully customizable so a really really beautiful bed here a lot of space and again it is an island berth so no issues in moving around there but you wouldn't expect that from a 60 foot vessel again as we just look at the joinery and you know that Teresa and I are absolute joinery nuts here it is all of the absolute top quality when they start lining up wood grain so that everything matches and you get patterns that are continuous through different cabinets you can tell that there are craftsmen at work here and honestly just take a moment to look at the absolute splendor of this four cabin one final look at the huge opening hatches and the amount of light that comes through that you would see when you are drinking your morning coffee in bed and we can continue our journey aft let us start with what we could consider to be the guest heads so again a bright and airy space we have a full size shower stall electric flushing heads obviously you're not going to get a manual jabs go in this beer moth and i am sure that you can appreciate as with every other aspect of this boat that we have seen everything here is of absolutely the highest quality now leaving the shower store we are going to move across the hallway to the Pullman berths now again everything here is absolutely fantastic quality in other vessels I have previously found Pullman berths to be slightly dark and oppressive no such problem here everything here is light and spacious there is ample storage for your gear and again I think that if you were crew and sometimes we have found that uh, monohull sailors and friends of ours that have Pullman berths actually choose to use them when there is inclement weather as they are more secure so again a really lovely and useful space on this Oyster 595 now let me just take a quick pause to make some shameless advertising for our own channel coming up in this review series we've got the rustler 44 the swan 48 we've got moody deck saloons we've got halberg grassies and many many other boats we would love to show you so please feel free to subscribe and that's my advertising over back to the saloon now as we move aft you can see that this saloon is punctuated by these beautiful companionway steps i actually don't think i've ever seen a set of companionway steps as pretty as these however we're not talking about steps here we are looking aft and moving down through that corridor on the port side to take in the galley now I am a big fan of linear galleys in mono holes. They allow you to brace yourself in the seaway and give you a really good place to prepare meals if you're in a seaway or whether you're at anchor. And this Oyster 595 is no exception. It is absolutely beautiful. Everything is bespoke from double sinks. We have dishwashers here. We have a top of the range hob and oven it is going to be a really nice place to cook but it's also superbly practical from waste chutes and fridges fridge freezers coffee machines microwave extractor fans there is nothing in this galley that a modern domestic kitchen does not have so again an absolutely beautiful space and one thing even with this galley it is really light and airy linear galleys in center cockpits can be dark there's no such problem here it is just a beautiful light boat and that is actually not an easy thing to achieve now lighting aside we will move past this full-size double fridge freezer and head forward into the master cabin and again we've got a treat for you here because i think i don't think i've seen a nicer master cabin ever moving aft we can see we have i don't really think this cabin needs that much explanation it is just stunning it is absolutely beautiful and honestly I, it, what can i say it's light it's airy it's got those seascape windows the joinery is bespoke and beautiful the bed is huge nothing i don't like about this and of course you have an associated on suite heads here so whether you are relaxing on the chaise long or whether you're having a lion or whether you just you know want to enjoy this as a space to remove yourself from the crew and other members 
on the boat this is it's just beautiful so again beautiful nothing i wouldn't expect from a mark of this quality an absolutely beautiful area very light very relaxing and if you needed or wanted to circumnavigate and you had the money i don't think you can go far wrong with a boat like this if you are after a high-end monohull it is absolutely beautiful and again from our point of view would we buy a boat like this if we had the money I'm not sure it's for us, but that's because we want different things from a monohull. We'd probably be looking towards an expedition boat. However, for a fast, safe, and very, very, very luxurious circumnavigation, you can't really go far wrong with a boat that you can customize as well as this. You are essentially getting a floating and beautiful luxury apartment all rolled up in a boat which has got absolute paragon of safety features and comes with 30 years of experience so beautiful Abs i absolutely love this boat i think you probably can guess from listening to me prattle on that i am a real fan of these high quality boats and as we take one final pan around the master cabin on the oyster 595 from the chaise long on the starboard side you can see that you've got areas like this that would if you wanted to put a television or audio visual equipment in to watch in bed that would not be a difficult thing to do there's also this heads on the starboard side now again everything here is full size because you have a boat which is 60 foot you are not having to kind of like limit space so you've got that fantastic bespoke cabinetry again a very very light and airy part of the boat so who buys an oyster 595 oyster are very keen to point out that a boat like the 595 can easily be sailed by a couple so you don't need or necessarily need to have crew so a couple with children or just a couple who have retired with an absolute bucket load of money and want to do everything in an abject luxury this is absolutely perfect and again i do love these boats that can be sailed shorthanded without the need for crew for after all we tend to want to get a Away from people and it's the reason why we buy these boats now the navigation suite here the chart table is one of the finest and most high-tech i have ever seen obviously everything has been specified by the current owners but there is full fingertip control over all the boat systems whether you have got chart plotters whether you've got backup autopilots whether you have the communications equipment so that you can communicate at sea as well as that absolutely huge switch panel Aft. so you have and you can monitor every aspect of this boat one very minor niggle with this boat is that while sat in the navigation seat i did not have line of sight to see out of the boat i do like a navigation suite and a chart table where i can see the horizon because i tend to suffer from seasickness however this is really just a minor quibble moving after this boat has been specified with a crew berth so next to the engine bay there is a full-size berth for a skipper or a paid member of the crew or maybe that third child that you really don't like that much however it is a full-size berth and everything can be monitored from this area but although this crew compartment is compact there is a lot of light and it is possibly one of the most luxurious crew compartments or berths I have seen in any yacht. The crew berth also has the engine door access and that moves into the engine room. And as you can imagine from a mark of this quality, everything is of absolutely the highest qualities. Whether you have these double fuel filters to allow easy monitoring of potential fuel pollution or water ingress into the fuel, everything is at hand, everything is labeled and let us just finish off this tour with a long lingering look at the engine on this boat so obviously we have the shaft drive coupling a huge volvo engine this boat comes as standard with the 150 horsepower that's 110 kilowatt volvo engine again so no issues there in propelling yourself through the water and so that ladies and gentlemen was the oyster 595 let us just take a last long lingering look before we ascend up the companionway steps and i give you my final thoughts on this beautiful vessel so the oyster 595 what do i think well what is there not to say that hasn't already been written about in the press over many years these boats are phenomenally beautiful 
phenomenally beautiful. Everything is as good as you're gonna get both outside and inside. The nod to design, the aesthetic, it is all stunning and they have a pedigree for going across oceans in absolute luxury and safety. So I'm not going to wax lyrical about this too much because I think that the, the, the walkthrough that you've seen kind of like doesn't really need any more gilding. She is a beautiful, beautiful, capable yacht. Any negatives about it? No, there aren't any negatives about it, apart from possibly the price tag, but you never thought this was going to be a cheap yacht. So it is absolutely beautiful. It is a lottery win boat. It is obviously the, the thing that the, the, the yacht that dreams are made of. So I'm super pleased to have seen this boat. Let us know down below what you think of her. Um, would you buy this? Is it, you know, would you buy this if you won the lottery or would you rather look at something else? So I hope you enjoyed this. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up and we'll be back again soon with lots more reviews detailing different aspects of yacht design. Take care, goodbye.